महादेव You are not as much tired as every day when you are going to listen to this. <laughs> so finally, Mahalakshmi said, at least one day, they can, they can all listen when they are still little fresh and not as hungry as every day. Just a request to everyone to put your phone on a silent mode. We all know that our minds can't be put on a silent mode, at least the phones be. If your mind is on a silent mode, the Yoga Shastra calls this as Samadhi. Uh, where all the thought processes are suspended, are resting, is then called as Samadhi. Right. So if you people are settled, I will begin. Almost. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. I have been told specifically that I should keep you engaged. <laughs> that I should keep you engaged till they give me a signal. <laughs> so this is not a session where, you know, we are, is meant for learning, but it is only for engagement so that all of us do not reach over there and create noise. But I am going to turn this into a learning session. This is the metamorphosis. You know, talking to people for so many years, I have come to one conclusion and a very clear one that there are various types of spiritual speakers and each one of them has his own class of people to address. Some of them are given specifically because people seek spiritual entertainment too. But there is nothing wrong in having spiritual entertainment. People feel nice about it. So those who are seeking a feeling, a nice feeling, are actually not seeking to educate themselves. They are not seeking to learn anything, to be enlightened, but they are simply seeking a feel good. Of, they are seeking that feeling, nice feeling, which is sufficient enough. Maulaji, request to you all, as you are taking over there, everybody should be in Mauna. Huh. No shouting and, you know, talking like that. Uh, use your telepathy. Otherwise, what did they develop sitting over here so many days? Hmm. 
so here we go. But I have found this about me, and that is, this is not entertainment. I am neither giving you entertainment, nor am I a management teacher, management guru. I bring to you what my teachers have given. I may be using a different language. I may be having a different style than my teachers. I come from a very orthodox background. Yes, which is true. I come from a background where I have served my teachers, living with them, serving them, going for bhiksha, bringing bhiksha. The way we were supposed to live is the way I have lived and gathered the knowledge. One of my teacher's condition was, Dr. Boyal, he would teach me Brahma Sutra only if I came at 3.30 in the morning. And to me, this was perfect. If you want to check if you want to test your commitment, your commitment will be tested only when things become difficult. This is your test of commitment. How committed are you to certain things? When a relationship starts going difficult times, if there is a commitment, it means I will stay through. I will not budge. What do you learn from Ramayana is this. People are going to be there when you have good times. But those who can stay put up with you, even when you are going through difficult times, are people who are reliable, who are going to be with you. This is to be seen. This is what Sri Rama said that people have not understood what Bharata is. Not even Kaikai Kai could understand what Bharata is. Kaikai Kai thought that by giving Bharata this throne, this kingdom, the power, she was doing a great favor to Bharata. Nor even Lakshmana could understand it. But Rama says, this is not what Bharata wants. You cannot bribe Bharata. You cannot purchase Bharata. He is not a sellable commodity purchasable commodity. If your commitment can be changed by offering some allurements, by giving some temptations, then that commitment was already fragile. It was just waiting for some pressure to increase, that's all. So when Lakshmana sees the flags of Ayodhya coming with the dust in the air, he tells Rama Bharata is coming with all the Sena, the entire army, and we need to combat. And that is when Sri Rama said, Lakshmana, keep your bow and arrow down. It is Bharata coming. Because Bharata can come with horses, elephants and chariots. But no, it is Bharata coming. Kai Kai could not understand. People of Ayodhya could not understand. But 
only Ram knew what Bharata's value is. Commitment. Pandit Ram Kinkarju Bhaktiaya, he was a great scholar, teacher, orator of Ramayana. I think some of you people over here are also great admirers of Tulsi Ramayana. He was called as a Yuga Tulasi. Pandit Ji, Maharaj Ji was called, I have great reverence for him. He was a Grihastha, Pandit Ram Tinkar Ji Upadhyay, but a great master. He once said that Rama's avatar is not meant so that he can he can kill Ravana, Kumbhakarna, etc. Rama did not have to go to the forest in order to defeat Ravana. He could have had sat right in his bedroom and shot an arrow. Because Rama's arrow is known as Amog, which means it can never miss its target. Not only that it will not miss its target, it will go meet the target and return back to the quiver. Comes back to the quiver. That what holds the arrows. Tunir. Rama didn't have to go to the forest and have Sita abducted. Lakshmana fall unconscious. Pandit Ji said, Rama's avatar and the entire Leela was only to bring the ideal of Bhakti in front of this world and that is Bharata. Hindi mein unho ne kaha ki ye jo samudra mandhan kiya waha keval Bharat ka Amrit Bharat rupi nikaal ne ke liye tha. Was meant only for to show the world what is an ideal of devotion and love which was seen only in Bharata. If this event of Rama going into the exile would not have had happened, the world would have stayed deprived of knowing what is the commitment of love. You would never know that to what extent your love can take you. When Bharata comes to know that Kaikai has done this in order so that he gains the wealth, he gains the power, Bharata uses this word, he says, Mother, you were supposed to be giving me life. Hey Janani, you are supposed to give me life. But by taking away Rama from me, you have taken away my life. Tell me, are you my mother? People want these great sages are doing penance for thousands of lives only to have one glimpse of Rama and I had him all my life. You took him away. And for what? For this kingdom of Ayodhya? For this little piece of land that you took away Rama from me? You thought that this was a great profit, a bargain that you are striking, a deal of profit? What did you do? You, you are my mother, you were supposed to give me the glass of nectar, Amrita and you gave me the glass of Visha, of poison. You took away Rama from my life. 
Bharata goes to that extent that Bharata refuses to call her mother all his life. Never again Bharata ever called Kaikai Kai as mother. If you want to see what is the commitment of love, you will have to drown yourself somewhere, dip yourself somewhere in Ramayana. Where is Shobha when? Ram? Okay. Here there is a knack of vanishing. The daughter and the, you know, her fiancé, they are getting married, they will have read the entire Ramayana first. If you cannot do anything, <coughs> at least keep this. Keep Ram.